Yeah, don't click back. Don't check out of this message. It's a powerful message that will transform your life. The word of the Lord is coming from the mouth of his servant. Sit back as you listen to the word of the Lord and also subscribe to this. Jesus, when he saw Jesus by prophecy, he said, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Now John is locked up, courtesy Herodias, the daughter, as a birthday gift. He was locked up and was about to be beheaded in anger. When the disciples came to him, you know what he said? The same person who identified Jesus, who announced him, he said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? That is what offense can do. The man who ordained Jesus in ministry, in fact, he trained some of the disciples who would later be the disciples of Jesus. And yet he said, Jesus, for I, I've... My pain vetoes every vision I have about you. My pain vetoes anything God told me about you. I am in a moment of pain. You claim to be the Messiah and now I am locked up in prison and you do not even have the courtesy to come and visit me. I hear a rumor that as a birthday gift, my head is going and you do not even show any sign of concern. Take that message to your Jesus. The disciples come to Jesus in a crusade ground. And says, sir, we don't mean to embarrass you, but there's a serious situation. The man who announced you most, the man who cried out and said he was the voice who was sent to bear witness to you, is in total doubt of you right now. What can destroy a man's ministry more than somebody who loved you and endorsed you openly? And is now saying, go, I'm not even sure of what I laid hands on. And the Bible says, Jesus... With calmness and intelligence, he turned and began to lay hands, healed a few people. He said, go and tell John what you see. The blind see, the deaf hear, and so on and so forth. The gospel is preached. Then he says, 11 verse 6 now, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Lord, where were you when I was losing my job? Where were the angels of protection when my loved one was being attacked by terrorists or died in a car crash? I don't mean to get you emotional, but I'm just, I'm discussing on the afflictions of the righteous. Lord, where were you when for the sake of my integrity as a man of God, I seem to have gone down? Where were you when Potiphar's wife was all around Joseph and because of his integrity, he didn't go to the palace, he went to the prison. The afflictions of the righteous. How do you explain Joseph holding a woman's, uh, the wife's, um, what they call it now? Her veil or whatever it is he was holding. How could he say that he did not have anything to do with her? That was evidence enough. And yet God was watching in heaven. How do you explain Hannah crying year after year? going to Shiloh. How do you explain that? How do you explain God's people under the rule and bondage of the Egyptians? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Let me tell you this. The believer is not a believer because of results. The believer is a believer because you have committed yourself to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Look unto Jesus is the first biblical recommendation i've had very painful experiences in the lives of people as i as i serve the purposes of god and sometimes you know when they can't see jesus you who is the closest to him based on what they perceive whatever they would have told him is what they tell you hallelujah since i cannot see jesus you claim to be the one who has come in his name you better be prepared to help me convey to jesus and I will tell you loud and clear, where was he when this happened? I know many people who I called in maybe the face of bereavement and whatever, and I say, can we say a word of prayer? And they say, Apostle, with all due respect, please do not talk to me about anything prayer now. And I know that they don't mean it. It's just what pain can do. Hallelujah. I heard about the story of someone who had an accident and he had to rush out and he stood watching his car burn and it burned to ashes. There was absolutely nothing he would have done. And that was a car that was like two months old. What was the value of dedicating the car in church? 
they poured oil on that car and it still burnt after two months. How about the business of believers that went down from COVID? And some of those people were great sponsors of the gospel. Now, just follow me. I'm a good pilot who will land well. You just follow me. Hallelujah. Mm. How about a man of God who gathered sick people and shouted in the name of the Lord that they will be healed and laid hands on them one by one till they arrested him and threw him out of that place. And he left that crusade ground as if he was living a funeral. Where is the Jesus I kept shouting and talking about? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just playing with words, nor am I playing with your mind. I'm revealing something that may be someone's situation right now. And you know, in the midst of challenges, you forget every title you have. You forget every, even Jesus wept. Very disturbing scripture. John 11, 35. If you see Jesus weeping, will you not cry too? That means you are in trouble. John eleven thirty five. 35. The comforter of those who were always weeping is now weeping. It doesn't matter why he's weeping. The fact that you saw tears coming out of his eyes. Hallelujah. Life wept. Hope wept. Victory wept. The fountain of wisdom wept. Weeping always carries a a picture of limitation when people weep it seems to communicate hopelessness or despair and the bible says jesus wept as god he never cried but when he became a man he cried jesus was angry the bible does not hide his frustrations he went into the temple and flogged people in anger he caused a fig tree because he was hungry and came to the tree and the tree would not deliver and he caused that tree. Look to Jesus. Listen to me. There will be moments in your life where you truly will not be able to find answers intellectually. That's why there is a realm of peace that surpasses all understanding. That means that peace is beyond the realm of arguing what is this, what is that. Remember at the apex of, of, of Job's problem, the wife was even confused. She said, curse God and die. And Job said, no, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? He said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I don't know what is happening to me. Different people came and started communicating several opinions. And Eli, who one time shot them, and he said, you guys, I respect you. I wanted to speak, but I have a limitation in age. He said, but there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty maketh men of understanding. Job himself, who encouraged himself in the Lord, got to a point where he was angry. And when you read chapter 38, the Bible said he summoned God. He said, God, I've finished comforting myself. We need to talk. Please come and explain to me the reason behind this pain. And the Bible says God came in a whirlwind and a discussion began. Hallelujah. Luke 